Hey everyone, and welcome to the Leadership Loft with Lakeisha C. Brooks and brought to you by Brooks Enterprise Consultants. Make sure to check out our website at www.brooks-consultants.com. And I am your host for today, Lakeisha C. Brooks, and I am joined with one of our certified associate partners, Miss Tracy Felton. Tracy, go ahead and introduce yourself for those that, who have not seen us in a few weeks. Right. Um, my name is Tracy Felton, and I'm a certified associate partner with Brooks Enterprise. I also am an educator, almost a 30 year educator, um, and an adjunct professor as well. Yes. So it's been a while, and uh, we were supposed to see you all last week. And if you look at our topic for today, it says managing stress, burnout, and fatigue. Well, that is why I could not join you <laughs> last week because I was very much stressed, very much burnt out, and I had a lot of fatigue. So I contacted my co-host, my wonderful, fabulous co-host, Tracy and Danielle, who is actually somewhere vacationing in Florida, jealous. And I said, look, I am full of stress. I am tired. I've had long days of training and i'm gonna have to just kind of bow out today ladies and so i mean this topic is so relevant for me because again it's something that i felt just last week but we are very happy to be with you today to talk about organizational stress and burnout and fatigue and what organizations can do to make sure that their staff and talent are taken care of and then even yourself if you are in an organization or you do have a business like myself what can you do to eliminate that stress? So Tracy and I are going to have a very candid, open conversation about this as well. And when I sent a message to Tracy, she said, girl, go ahead. It's OK. Get some rest. I'm like, OK, because I definitely need it. I think I cuddled on my couch and just relax. So thank you, Tracy, for allowing me to uh, take that time as well. So let's go ahead and dive into this conversation. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is, well, what can companies do? Um, you know, we look at what's going on now with us and we have COVID, we have parents that have kids at home, you have spouses and love. I mean, it's just like a lot going on. Right. And like you can't leave your house and I'm an extrovert. I feel like I'm going insanely crazy. So what can organizations do to combat that stress and that burnout in the organization? Tracy, what, what do you think some organizations can do? Um, I think that organizations can provide um, workshops, actually. I, th I think that would be really beneficial to provide workshops, to give their employees strategies on specifically mm. what to do. Because a lot of times, you know, everybody gets stressed, but everybody doesn't have the strategies to mm. be able to handle the stress, you know? And sometimes what they do to handle stress is not always a good thing. So mm -hmm. I think that um, having work, offering workshops and letting their employees know that they are there to actually listen and help. Because they need help. Absolutely. Definitely strategies definitely help. Um, workshops are definitely very helpful as well. Um, I know that um, I do a lot of work with TTI Insights and we have a really good stress quotient to kind of identify what's causing the stress as well. So organizations can figure out what's going on, having those open conversations. It's not always just the work that's causing the stress. Um, mm -hmm. So having that open conversation and that trust within your organization, with your manager to tell them what's going on, that can mm -hmm. also help to alleviate some of that stress as well. So being empathetic, understanding, having an open mind. And to your point, having those workshops, I know a lot of organizations, they may have like yoga day or they'll have like a fitness day and it's kind of hard now with what's going on but what organizations can do is again just have that conversations with their team and figure out like what's going on what can they do to alleviate that especially if some of that stress is related to being at home and being isolated not being able to go out and enjoy um especially if some of their teammates or their employees are working uh, or living alone. Maybe they don't have anyone to talk to. They don't have a dog. They don't have any sort of pet. So they're just kind of handling all of this stress by themselves. So mm -hmm. they don't really know what to do. Um, companies can also look at the workload they're giving to their 
their teammates and to their, their staff, because sometimes you're giving them too much and they're already overwhelmed, but because there is no trust, they're just taking on a lot of things as well. So this is something that organizations can do to alleviate some of the stress and burnout and fatigue that their talent may face. And so, Tracy, we need to look at it on the flip side. Now, we're talking a lot about organizations, but what can what can we do, whether we are an employee or staff or um, even if we are a business owner? Like, And you are also a business owner. So not only do, are you a consultant with me, you also have another business mm -hmm. that you do. So what are some of the things that we can do as employees or as business owners to alleviate our own stress that we may face? I think one, one major thing, to help alleviate stress is to prioritize the things mm -hmm. that we actually have to do. You know, sometimes we look at it in a whole big pile, like I got all this stuff to do, but if we really prioritize like the most important to the next, you know, and do it that way, that will alleviate some stress because then you could see the light at the end of the tunnel. When you mm -hmm. have it all in a big pile, like in the big ball, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, like, oh, I'll never get this done, you know? And as an employee, there are things, I know we've talked about this before, but there are, there's an employee assistance program too that, you know, employees can reach out for help. All right, and it's, it's interesting you said about having that big ball of stuff and prioritizing. So one of the methods that I teach a lot of people is the Eisenhower matrix. Um, which came from President Eisenhower that talked about what's important and what's urgent. And mm -hmm. if we're trying to do all these things at the same time, it's going to cause a lot of stress for us as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we're just trying to do so much by ourselves. We don't yeah. have the budget to hire people. So we just say, I, I have to get it done. I have to do it. I have to pay my bills. You know, you're like, I'm not a W2 anymore. If I want to make this money, I have to do it. So we put so much stress on ourselves mm -hmm. to hit those goals. And not that you don't want to, like you want to be successful. You right. want to hit your goals. And we have to keep in mind of what that's doing to us. And that's one of the things that I reached out to the two of you about was to say, hey, I'm I'm really stressed right now. Like I'm burned out. And I just remember like thinking, oh no, you can do it, Keisha. You can, you can do this broadcast. And I felt mm -hmm. like, not only would I sound like I'm stressed, but like you would probably see that I'm stressed because it wears on you that you just have so much going on. And lastly, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, what you also want to do is learn to say no. Mm. A lot of times we just want to take on everything like, oh, can you do this? Yeah, I'll do it. You want to do that? Yeah, I'll do it. Because you just feel like I, I mean, it's not even just jobs. It's just like yeah. we Every just feel time. like to get my name out there. Like I have to be on every board. I have to take every speaking engagement. I have to go to every networking event because look, I, I need to be a star. So I need to get my name out there. Yeah. And it's causing an abundance of stress. And I just, and I remember when I was um, doing ATD Greater Atlanta and I loved it. And I just realized I had to step away as the, I was gonna be the incoming president. I had to step away yeah. and I had to say, I am, better off and I can better serve the chapter right. in a different capacity in a different role. Yeah. And yeah. I had to say no to that. And trust me, I, I remember when they asked me to be president, I had my hand all up. I was like, oh yes, I'm about to do this. <laughs> and then I was like, no, I can't do this because I'm literally going to like follow my face from stress. Right. So again, it's those situations to know when to say, no, I, I can't do it. Or no, I can't. And I can actually do it that way as well. So anything you want to add to that, Tracy? Yeah, I do. Because I wanted to say, I mean, and this is perfect because this is Women's History Month. We it as, is. We as women often just feel like we can just take on this, 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 you know, and we have a label of being strong. And at one point I used to think the strong label was good, but it's not necessarily healthy, you know. Oh, because yeah. What is definitely, what is specifically, what's behind the strong part, you know? Mm -hmm. What are all of the things that go underneath that umbrella of strong? So I think it's good for us to really realize when we have bitten off more we can chew, when we need to say no. And then the, the thing about the no is no is a complete sentence. You don't have to go Ooh. and be about saying no. 
all of that kind of stuff. And I'm learning that no is complete sentence for myself because I used to always have this long, you know, uh, reason as to why I'm saying no, because I felt bad for saying no, because I always say yes, you know? So yeah, that's just what I wanted to add. Man, that, that, man no is a complete sentence. No, period. Mm -hmm. You know, we write it like that, right? No, period. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to, to justify that by saying no, and this is why, but it's sometimes it's just that silence. No. No. No, that's it. No rhyme no. or reason. Just no. I love that. Very, very powerful nugget mm -hmm. you just provided to us by just saying simply no as well. And you talked about being a woman and mm -hmm. all the stress that we face and that label of being strong where we always in the past saw it as, as a good thing. Not that it's not a good thing because it is. Right. Right. But to your point, if you unpeel that, Mm -hmm. meaning of strong, mm -hmm. it could be, I just carry so much burden, so yeah. much weight. I carry my career. I carry my family. Mm -hmm. I carry my family's family. Sometimes I carry okay. my parents. I just have so much on me that I'm so strong and I don't know how to say no, period. Right. That exactly. is very, very much a good point, Tracy, that you just brought up to a lot of us strong women who proud <laughs> ourselves on being strong and say, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to say I'm stressed. Yes. It's okay to say that I'm fatigued. It's okay to say, hell, I'm about to get some burnout. If I don't stop right now, right. I'm going to be burnt out. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Giving us permission to say no. So you talked about EAP programs mm -hmm. and and for those that do not know, I think you mentioned it's employee assistant programs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of organizations have that for employees and their talent um, to make sure that they're taken care of. And so I want to talk to you about that. How effective are they in relations to decreasing or alleviating stress and fatigue and burnout? From your experience, have you ever utilized them or how effective can they be? I haven't, but I, I definitely wanted to speak about that because... I have heard more than one person throughout my, my uh, teaching career that don't trust the program because the mm. employer will know that they're having problems, you know? So I think that one message that needs to be sent out is that these programs are really safe. Like you, it's a safe haven for you. You really can use the programs. You know what I mean? Right. But they first have to, People first have to feel like they can be themselves and be open and be honest. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, because within those programs, you know, you have people who are alcoholics, you know, people who are drug addicts who need the assistance because they are stressed out. They may have turned to these different yeah. tools, um, but there are definitely some people are afraid to actually, they'll go to a therapist or something outside and pay rather than to use what they have at the job. So it's important to feel safe. Mm, that's a really good point. Um, having that psychological safety to be able to utilize the EAP programs. And um, I utilized the EAP program when I was a, a manager of training at an organization. And there was so much untapped potential with that relationship with our EAP uh, mm -hmm. providers. And not only did they have training for stress, I mean, they had like financial literacy training and things like that. They had personal development just, and I think they gave us two or four free one hour sessions with our partnership with them. And it was like, wow. So mm -hmm. even if people don't feel comfortable going on a one-on-one -on -one basis, it's right. our responsibility, even as training managers and leaders and, and other uh, leaders within the organization to tap into that because you may have a free hour or two to be able to even just train your team on it. Right. Because And what I, the reason why we thought about financial literacy, uh, which seems so unconventional, was because we said that could be a stressor for people. Yes. People may feel that I I really need to work a lot of hours. I don't know how to manage my money. I don't know how to budget. And you're not going to go around telling your coworkers and your boss, like I'm struggling financially. Right. It may be a way for them to alleviate some of that stress by knowing like, 
oh, there is a way to financially get out of this as well. So it's so important to your point is to tap into that resource, talk to it. I mean, go to HR and talk to them about EAP program. You don't have to talk to HR about your personal problem. Just say, right. can you send me the information? You should have it as part of your benefits packet, depending on the level and the size of the organization. And it's, again, it's about that psychological safety. And I definitely understand people saying, if I go to an EAP provider within the organization, Will it get back to my, you know, team, and will it get back to my manager? The things that I say, I can definitely understand why someone would say, "Yeah, I'm gonna go outside of here to right. to get that taken care of," versus inside my organization as well. And you talked about using external resources and therapy and things like that. Now, I up until last week will go to therapy every other week. Because mm -hmm. we do so much work to take care of our, our body. And right. um, but forgetting that our mind is part of our body. Like, why are yeah. we not talking to someone and saying that it's OK to talk to a therapist? Sometimes we just need to unload yeah. <laughs> on someone yeah, that's right. not our mama, daddy, sister, cousin, you know, just someone we can talk to to alleviate some of that stuff. And I just had a wonderful relationship with my therapist. And if I was stressed, I mean, there'll be times when I'm just like, oh my gosh, can I just have an emergency meeting with you? I just, I need someone to talk to as well. And there are a lot of people that don't trust therapists either. So they don't yeah. want that even, even that. So what would you say to someone that says, I don't trust therapists. I don't, I don't want to go down that route either. <laughs> what would I say? Um, you know, I think I would, really ask them the person who doesn't trust because I, I, I have a family member specifically who needs <laughs> to do it. and my question always is well what is the alternative what is your alternative mm -hmm. and how have things been working by not going you know what I mean what are your other options you know really genuinely tell me what other options you have other than at least trying it out, you know, just give it a try. Because I definitely have done therapy for, for a long time, you know, off and on throughout different phases of my life. I've done therapy and it's very beneficial because our friends are not our therapists. Mm. Even we though they are. No, I know. <laughs> But they're not, you know, so we don't always have to dump everything on our friends. We really can go to a therapist. Now, we'll say I do have a friend that's a therapist and shout out to I Katrina think. Henry. My Katrina best friend Henry. Is yeah, so she is a therapist. So shout out to her. But we don't all have Katrina Henry's. And even so, there's some things that that because of that relationship ethically, I wouldn't necessarily even want to go to Katrina because we do have that personal relationship as well. So it is sometimes good to have that homegirl. And over the years, yeah, we, we reconnected um, and talked the other day. And she knows back in them days, <laughs> there was a lot of sessions with Miss Henry to talk about some things in my life. So yeah. it definitely has its benefits. And to your point, it's also good to go outside of our friends who do have those credentials to be a therapist as well. So that's a really good point that you bring up there too. Okay. So we talked a lot about stress and burnout. Um, let's talk about the difference in the two, because I think that they're used interchangeably and they're different. So I pulled up something that I use in a lot of my trainings when I talk about stress and burnout. And I'm just going to share with you all. And Tracy, you can tell me if you agree with it or if it's something that you've experienced. So a lot of times when I look at stress, it is being over engaged in something because you're just trying to do too much. Like you were saying, like you got this ball and you're just like, I just have to do everything. Like I have to get it all done. Whereas in burnout, you're, you're disengaged. Mm -hmm. You just, you don't want to be a part of that big ball. You just let the ball sit there yes. <laughs> and you just stare at the ball and it doesn't move and it doesn't do anything because yes. you're not engaged. And then when we look at stress, we look at our emotions being heightened and just being like all over the place and they're mm -hmm. just overactive. And if we look at the emotions on the burnout side, it's a little bit more just blunt or nonchalant or it just isn't much there. And the biggest difference that I think that we look at when we look at stress and when I, I talk about in these trainings is that stress is 
physically damaging. Mm -hmm. So remember when I said to you that if I would have come on, you guys would have been like, oh, she just really does not look like herself. Yeah. That makeup did not help her. She does not look the same, right? Ooh, what's going on? And if we look at the flips out of our burnout side, it's emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an emotional taxing thing. And so when we look at the workplace, we see these employees that are just doing too much to get things done versus those that seem like they're just completely checked out. Yeah. So for you, um, what are some of those differences that you can identify between being stressed or having stress and burnout? Um, you know, one thing I wanted to add that I recently found out is that one difference between stress and burnout is that burnout is actually a medical condition. Wow. Mm hmm. Oh, wow. When you get to burnout, that's when it's a it's a medical issue that like you physically start having physical um, ailments due to the stress. Um, I know that when I experience burnout, I do absolutely nothing like you were saying. <laughs> I don't do anything, you know, um, because it bec because it becomes overwhelming, so overwhelming, and I think that yeah. mentally you get in a fight or flight kind of state. Yeah. Um, and just to handle everything, you just don't do anything, you know. And so yeah. I have to work and talk myself back into okay, Tracy. This deadline is this day, you know. You got to get it done. But sometimes people can't get back in that mode, and that's when they need to go seek some assistance because they can't get out of the burnout stage. And that's what, you know, I was reading about that the burnout, sometimes people can't get out Yeah, on yeah. their own. Mm, yeah. That's it's interesting. Yeah. That's, it does get to that point. I think that as a employer, as a manager, we need to look for those signs. Yes. If they are really overly engaged yes. and they are having those heightened emotions, we do want to talk to that person before they get to that burnout phase, because to your point, sometimes when they're in that burnout phase, it's hard to get them out. Yeah, here. it's this is not going to work out for them because they're they're stuck. Mm -hmm. And we didn't look at the signs before that. We didn't see that you know physically they're having these signs of stress, or we're not seeing that they're just doing a lot and they can't calm down or slow down. Yeah. And we need to, to offer that help. Maybe to your point, maybe we want to have a training on that stress, diagnose that stress um, mm -hmm. on the surface, and then maybe diagnose it further with a therapist who's right. professionally licensed to do that as well, because we can only do so much. You right. know, we can diagnose by talking. Okay. Sounds like this. And let me refer you to a professional that can Right. Dig a little deeper than what I can as a leader or a manager as well. So sometimes you you have to take it that, that far as well. And we as individuals, we have to notice when we're feeling that stress and that stress is becoming burnout as well. We do. We always rely on someone else to say, hey, Tracy, hey, Lakeisha, you're getting to that point. Right. We have to notice it ourselves when we start to feel that I'm feeling disengaged. I feel like I just, I can't do it anymore. I just, right. I'm, I'm done. Right. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? Oh my goodness. You know, I'm a teacher. So <laughs> when we first started this distance learning, um, I think I've shared this with you that it's actually double the work. Like some people are like, oh, they're home, they're eating bonbons, they're not doing anything, but that is so not true. So the work has doubled literally because what you could normally do in the building, you don't have time to do because the kids are right there on the screen with you, you know? So it got to the point probably around November. And it's funny when I said that they were doing, because my district is doing distance learning a little differently. They are they have mirrored a full school day online. Mm -hmm. on wow. Zoom. So children, Ooh, that's exhausting. Yes. Every day from nine to four, children are specifically all day on Zoom minus lunch. And that's a lot. And when I saw the schedule, I said, people are going to be burned out by October. That's what I kept saying by October, because you can't do online like you do in the building. Anyway, by October or November, we had so many directives, so many directives, like papers that we had to fill out and 
You got to see who has D's and E's. You got to see who's not coming to distance learning. You got to call the parents. You got to find out why. You need to do a plan to tell us what are you going to do about the people that are not coming? Well, we don't know what to do about the people <laughs> who are not coming. So it got to the point where it was so much. And I was in the staff, I was in a meeting, my team meeting. And I said, I'm not doing it. And I've ne in, in 29 years, I've never, ever been in a meeting and said what I was not doing. But I literally could not take any more. I was like, I'm just not going to do it. And people were kind of looking like, is she really serious? And I was serious. The, the due date came for the forms. I had not turned mine in. <laughs> and my teammate did it for me. And that mm -hmm. kind of kickstarted me. So I said, okay, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate it. Next time when it's due. I'll make sure I have mine done. Wow. Yeah, but, that's that's a lot. Yeah. I I was confused. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned something that was very interesting. You talked about, you know, you guys being in distant learning and you kind of have been that way and nine to four. That is a long time to be that's sitting true. in front of your screen. So mm -hmm. how do you all as as uh, teachers and educators handle it when your kids, your students are burnt out or they're fatigued because I've hosted trainings or I've been in a training that long. And that's just maybe a, a few days, right? So like, you know, once every four months or something, we're talking about kids every day. Mm -hmm. How in the world have you been dealing with the stress and fatigue from your, from your students? You know what I do, Lakeisha? I mm -hmm. make it fun. I make it fun so that the students are, in the zoom before i'm in there <laughs> and they don't want to leave so i play music you know at the start of every class i um do a motivational quote in the chat and then they have to interpret the motivational quote we talk about that and i teach science that is none of this has anything to do with science and so we spend like the first 10 to 15 minutes just able to talk. They can tell me, oh, so-and-so, my mom had a baby. My brand new baby brother came home last night. You know what I mean? So I kind of let them de-stress themselves because they'll get in my zones and say, I don't know if I can do this. So-and-so just gave us five pages of work. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. So I give them a space to de-stress, really, because they need it. Yeah, I'm sure they really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Having that going from, you know, being able to run around and move from class to class and things like that to like, I have to sit in front of this screen, even though they love their screen time. Yeah, it's not yeah. the same when I have to listen to, you know, Miss Felton talk. It's not right. the same way as looking at my favorite YouTube videos. It's a right. very different type of staring at the screen time. So when we talk about helping our team or helping our students in your case or talent alleviate some stress, what are some ways that we as leaders can actually identify that someone is stressed? So whether it is our direct report, our student, um, what can we do to identify the fact that maybe somebody is stressed out? I think that I think that I know for the for the other teachers, I think because I the teachers are extremely stressed. You know, they're stressed yeah. out, they're quitting, they're quitting left and right. But I think that if someone were to give us like a survey, an anonymous survey that deals with all the different points of stress you know are you feeling this 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 you know a scale from one to ten how is this da, da, da. so you will actually have the data that you need right there to show you just how stressed your employees are you need you, you're gonna have to have the data because somebody may not feel comfortable really coming to you you know and you got to make sure you're the kind of leader where people feel like they can come to you too yeah, that's a really good a point. And that kind of leads us back to what we were saying about the stress quotient that we have with TTI, where people can do an anonymous survey. I actually have done it myself. They could do the anonymous assessment and it kind of figures out what's going on. And you can feel comfortable, you know, sharing that because I remember speaking to someone and we were talking about stress in a webinar. And I asked her, I said, well, have you talked to your manager about your stress? And she says, no, I don't feel comfortable yet because I feel if I tell her she's going to think that I can't do my job. She's exactly. going to think that I'm weak and I can't do my job. So to your point, you know, we have to be able to allow people to feel OK to say their stress mm -hmm. without saying, hey, I'm coming to you. And now we're thinking, oh, 
Tracy, she can't really do the job or, right. you know, poor Tracy, let's give it to someone else. Right. So I love that idea of making the assessments, if you will, anonymous, like we do with TTI, just to make sure that people can have that safety to be able to express themselves without being able to come into someone face to face when they may not feel comfortable doing that as well. So mm -hmm. if you do have that psychological safety that we, we keep speaking about and you have that trust, have those touch points with with your team. Mm -hmm. You know, just say this meeting, you know, and if you're a good manager and you're working remotely or even face to face, you're going to mm -hmm. have check ins. You're going to have whether it's weekly check ins twice a month and just say to your point before we even start talking about your job and your work performance. Just tell me how you're doing. And yeah. I've done that before. It's like, we're not talking about the job right now. I just want to know how are you doing? Talk mm -hmm. to me about how you're feeling and just share whatever you want. So that's another way is that once you have built that trust, just let the person talk, whether it's five, 10 minutes before we even talk about performance or what's mm -hmm. going on as far as your job per se. Let mm -hmm. me just know about you how right. you're feeling and you will be surprised how many people just unload and want to talk to you about what's going on because when you're hearing what's going on then it actually can help you determine you know if there is some like performance situation it could be man i didn't know they were going through all of this right i just was looking and seeing that the job wasn't done and now i'm allowing them to tell me mm -hmm. i'm seeing that it's actually not about performance or skill it's really about other factors that are stressing them out as well. So exactly. definitely important to have that trust when we are talking about stress and yeah. being um, able to communicate that information. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what causes stress and burnout in an organization? And I'll just share it with me. It could be a number of things. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Do I have time for all right. the things that stress me out in an organization? Um, there are some, no, of course, common ones. You know, um, conflict on a team and personality conflicts can be a huge stress. I have dealt with this before, where I am on a team and that conflict really stresses you out to even like want to talk to the person you're having conflict with mm -hmm. or the fact that there's chaos or there's tension or the team is toxic where you just you feel stressed every time you're in a team meeting or every time you have to engage with them your mm -hmm. your stress is heightened because mm -hmm. i don't want to be in this environment and mm -hmm. you spend most of your time at work than you than you do at home during your work week mm -hmm. so just imagine you're going to work and it's a toxic environment you have personalities that clashing and you have to deal with these people every day. Every day, all day. Every <laughs> Tracy's like, that has been me before. That definitely is something that can stress people out. You know, financial stuff. You know, maybe you're feeling that you are overworked, underpaid. Mm -hmm. That can be a huge stressor because you feel like you have to stay at the job. You don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You have to be there in that situation because until things get better, they're just stuck, yeah. you know, it could be bad work conditions. I mean, there's a number of things that can cause stress in an organization, um, changes to your work. If you're doing something and all of a sudden they're like, no, Tracy, sorry. Right. You're do it this way instead of that way, that could okay. be a lot of stress. So those are just some of the common things that I've seen and I've heard in my training and some of the things I've experienced myself. What about you, Tracy? What are some of the things that you've experienced as far as causing you stress and burnout and then maybe some things you've heard about? I think one of the biggest causes of stress is not being heard, not feeling like you have a voice. Yeah. So that even though all of these things are going on, the, the really the main thing is no one is listening or no one is hearing you. Nobody is. Is anybody going to do anything about this? You know, Um that's one of the major things. And I think dealing with things on the job that are out of your control can be very stressful. Yeah. You know, you have no say so at all in something mm -hmm. and it has totally stressed you out. That's that's major in the workplace. Because yeah. what do you do? You know, just like what I was telling you, I went to the rally. They're telling us we have to go back to work on March 17th. What do you do? You know? <laughs> so choice, yeah. yeah you don't have a choice and i think that really creates a lot of stress when you don't give people choices 
you know? Mm. Yeah, that, that's a really big one. Um, when we talk about not having certain control mm -hmm. um, and even if you don't have the influence as well, because sometimes you can influence, but you don't have control. But when you don't have either one of them right. and you are stuck, as they say, between a rock and a hard place and you just have to kind of endure certain things. Yes. That can cause you a lot of stress in the organization. And like I said, I, I've been there and I've tried to now not allow work situations to stress me out. So whether it's, you know, personnel situations and personalities or a certain project, you know, what we can do is shut down that computer. If you're working on a very stressful project, you know, actually have maybe have a conversation with the person that's stressing you out. Try to deal with that sort of thing face on and handle that conflict, because if it festers, it can actually, again, turn into burnout where someone is is the first they were stressed. And now they're burnt out and they're just completely checked out of your team. They're not mm -hmm. engaged. Somebody that used to be a champion, someone that used to be a high performer on your team who has been dealing with some personnel, pers you know, or changing their projects or whatever that's causing them stress. Now they're just complacent and they're just there. Right. You didn't do anything about it. So definitely something that I personally have experienced. I've heard from other people and I'm sure you've either seen or um, dealt with that yourself, Tracy. Definitely. For sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when we look at, we've we talked a lot about organizations and um, identifying some things that um, can cause stress. What do you think would be the impact of organizational stress? So if an organization is dealing with a lot of stress, which a lot of industries are, or a lot of organizations are, how would that impact the organization as a whole when they have a um, workforce that's, that's stressed out? I think... Um work performance is one of the biggest things that it affects the work performance, you know, because you don't put in as much as you could because you're stressed out. Right. You know what I mean? And like I said about the voice, you don't feel heard. So why am I going to do this in the first place, which is stressful, you know, and just all around the productivity of the particular um, business. is not as good as it could be. Yeah, I agree with you. That productivity uh, can definitely be impacted greatly within the organization when you have people that are stressed. They don't want to be there. They're there for a paycheck. And I know a lot of organizations have felt that at some point people are just here to collect a paycheck. They don't want to be here. They're not bought into what you're doing. They are stressed out. They are overworked and they're just going to do what they have to do. Um, I used to have cold works with coworkers whenever we would have to put on that, that hat to say, let's just get it done. We're right. not engaged. We would say different code words, which I will not say because those are all the code words that we would say whenever we would need to motivate ourselves when we were stressed out and we were just there just to be there. But to your point, productivity can really be impacted and customer satisfaction, customer service. Yes. If your team is stressed out and you get a bad customer or you get an angry person on the phone, who do you think they're going to take it out on? that employee is going to take it out on that that okay. person okay. they're they're going to go off and maybe ways that they normally would not but again they may not go out of their way to greet a customer they may not go out of their way to give the best customer satisfaction because you're not taking care of your employees so why would your employees want to take care of your clients mm -hmm. so that's also an impact of organizational stress is that all around it's going to impact what you're doing it could also impact people wanting to come work for you Yes. Your organizational um, reputation. I don't know about you, Tracy, but whenever I was looking for jobs, I would always go on Glassdoor um, mm -hmm. or any places like that to kind of see what people were saying. Mm -hmm. And if people feel like this place is stressful, it's high pressured, um, you know, people leave. I don't want to work there if I'm going to read that. So the impact is now your brand reputation is impacted greatly because people go to your job they're stressed out they don't want to work there so right. now you're having a problem with recruiting so there's a lot of different ways that organizational stress can impact you as an organization yes. if you don't take care of that as well so tracy i don't know if you wanted to add anything to that as well as far as the um, extent that organizations can face if they do not take care of the organizational stress and i was going to say the organizational stress i wanted to add to that it squelches talent. Mm. People have some, everybody has something to offer to the, the total group. And when they are stressed, you don't get that talent. You don't get to see 
what it is a person can do. That's why you can have somebody in a stress situation, put them in a different job, and they are flourishing. And they're like, well, I didn't even, you know, yes. know so and so could do that. They were stressed, <laughs> you know. Yes. They didn't get a chance to do that because That's a it was the point. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That I feel like I'm. I'm thinking about in my days and, and being in the workplace and how I kind of felt like I can flourish in another environment doing the same exact job mm -hmm. because I'm less stressed. I'm able to, to do that. I have the autonomy and the freedom to just be creative and really make an impact on the organization in a good way versus if I'm in a role where I don't get to flourish because I'm stressed out and I don't put my best foot forward. Right. So to your point, that can really impact retention of good talent. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Thank you. Well, that actually concludes our conversation today. I mean, it was really good, Tracy, to talk about stress. It was. And oh, my goodness. And what is the, what is one tip that you would give someone or a couple of nuggets, if you will, that you would give someone who's maybe dealing with stress or maybe, maybe even an organization that doesn't know how to handle that? What are just some of your last minute takeaways that you want to give out as a gift to those that are watching us today? Um, for for a person, an employee, I would say, or just an individual person, write down and prioritize what it is that you have to do. That's so important when you see it on paper, because sometimes we have things in our head, this, this, and this, and this, and this, you know. And even if you look at it on the calendar, that's not good either, because the whole month is just cluttered yeah. up, you know. But if you break it down like week by week, what do I have to do this week? Or even break it down day by day. That will definitely help with the stress, and with yeah, the point. yeah, and with the corporations, with the with the workplace, I think it's important for leadership to stay in tune with their employees. You have to stay in tune. You can't. I was in a meeting, and I'm not going to say when it was, <laughs> but I was in a meeting, and the leader had all of was giving us all of this information that was stressing everybody out mm. it was in a zoom and when the meeting was over at the end of the meeting the the leader said well how does every how's everybody feeling and if you could have seen the way that chat rolled stressed scared upset frantic angry furious it just rolled and you know what the leader said? Oh, well, I don't want you all to feel that way, but we'll meet again next week. <sighs> Lady, did you see what these people just said? <laughs> They're working wow. with you, ma'am. And you asked them how they felt, and then you dismissed them at the same time. So wow. it's important, I would say, for leaders to make sure that you are in tune and truly engaged with the stress level of your employees for sure. Wow. That was a very powerful story mm -hmm. that, you know, you hear people, you're asking for feedback, tell me how you feel. And you're seeing, you know, stressed and I and uncertainty and things like that. And you just said, well, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see you next time? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just can feel so, you feel so devalued. Yes, as a, a teammate, as an employee, as talent in that organization. And that uncertainty can definitely cause stress. And I've been there when you're just like, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure the vision, the direction we're going. And if my right. manager said, well, thank you, Lakeisha. Right. <laughs> we're going to go on to the next topic. We appreciate that. I, I just would feel like I don't know if I would want to be there because right. they clearly are putting me in a situation where I don't know what's going on. I am stressed out. It is uncertainty. And you're not addressing how I feel. Yes. Man, that that could have been a tough situation. So thank you for sharing that. Because I'm sure it's a lot of people that are watching that are like, yeah, I've been there before. They mm -hmm. didn't hear my voice when I was trying to tell them how I felt about the situation. So great mm -hmm. advice. And um, I will piggyback on that. Definitely to your point of managers being in tune, listening, mm -hmm. and also having a response and having an action plan. We want you all to listen. We want you to have a response to us. And we want you to act on it as well. So if you're just collecting our thoughts and surveying the room and saying, I acknowledge what you're saying. 
I hear what you're saying. Let me repeat it back to you. That's great. And what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to put it in your, your file cabinet, in your, in your cubby box, and that's going to be it? Or are you going to actually find solutions and answers to actually overcome this stress that your employees and your talent is facing? So that's taking it from that. I hear what you're saying, and I'm going to do something about it. Now, you may not be able to alleviate or eradicate all type of stress. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you at least to do something about it, have a plan in place and do something. Mm -hmm. Even if it's one thing, we always talk about those small wins. So if you're in an uncertain situation where I don't know where this boat is going. Now, the answer may not be, oh, we know where we're going. The boat's going straight. That may be something you can't handle. But just maybe tell me one thing. Well, I don't know the overall vision. And I can tell you this, though. Little small wins and little small nuggets can go a long way with helping people to alleviate that stress. So that is something that we would like our managers and our leaders to do to alleviate some of the stress within the workplace. And to ourselves, I'm going to piggyback on what you said when you said no, period. That's Mm -hmm. going to be my last bit of advice in the takeaway that I had that I want to give as a gift is to Tracy's point, just to say no, period, and just walk away. We don't always have to give an explanation. We don't always have to justify because then we're talking ourselves into possibly doing it again. So I love what you said that it's okay just to say no and walk away and say no and, and then come back later. It's okay to do that. But a lot of times we say no, but, and that negates the no that you just said. So Mm -hmm. we don't want to do that. So again, Tracy, any last words before we wrap up our conversation for tonight? No, I I think we've said it all. (laughs) Yes, this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you all so much for joining us for the Leadership Law for Lakeisha Brooks. Again, I am your host, Lakeisha C. Brooks, with my amazing guest here, Miss Tracy Felton. She will be a permanent co-host with me. And we will be back in two weeks to talk about another leadership topic. So make sure to go to our website at brooks-consultants.com. You will see Tracy's photo there. We just added her under our our team section. And if you want more information about our stress quotient, please email me at info at brooks-consultants.com. Until next time, have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Bye.